All right guys, you know what freaking time it is. We have done a few 24 hour reading vlogs and I feel like I've only made it through like one or two. So we are here to redeem ourselves today. And listen, I know I could just read for 24 hours within two days, but what's the fun in that? I wanna challenge myself. And because the last two times I couldn't do it, I wanna make sure it wasn't a fluke the first time I was able to do it. So I wanna try again. <laughs> today, we will be reading nothing but romance books for 24 hours straight. I really think I can do it. We're starting at like 112, 115. So I'm already like supposed to be up. I feel like I've got a lot of energy, obviously. Plus because it's summer, I've really been in like my romance phase. So I feel like I've got a lot of great books. And usually in these videos, I've only been getting through two books and that ends today. Today we are reading at least three books, but I'm going for four, baby. Yeah, yeah, that's the energy we're bringing today. Now let me show you the one that I got. So we have Beach Read by Emily Henry, amazing. Then we have Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. You guys have been telling me to read this book for the longest freaking time. I was supposed to read this in June because Seven Days in June, but I didn't. So there's no time like the present we're reading it today. Also, I have Every Summer After. Hopefully this is just as good as the other two. And then last but not least, I got a Nicola Yoon book. It's Instructions for Dancing because I already read Everything Everything as well as um, The Sun is Also a Star. Yeah. So this is her last book that she has out for a while. So we'll be reading this if we get to it. I feel like this is gonna be the last one. So Beach Read is 389 pages, yikes. Seven Days in June is 325 pages, so we're doing better. Every Summer After, 304 pages. And then obviously Nicole Yoon's book is the smallest, which is 285 pages. So I'm thinking we should keep the smallest book for the absolute end because I feel like Nicole Yoon will be able to keep my attention even though I'll be sleep deprived. But I don't think we should start with like one of the biggest books. So I don't think we should start with Beach Read. So it's between every summer after and seven days in June. What y'all think? Let me read the back of every summer after. Let's see. Six summers to fall in love, one moment to fall apart. Oh, we can do it right, okay? That sounds cute. Mm. There's a funeral in this one, I don't know. Should we start with this or Seven Days in June? Oh, erotica writer, okay, Eva. Who is feeling pressed from all sides? Oh, they're both writers, okay, that's cute. So everyone surprised shows up to New York. Of course it's in New York, okay. Sparks fly, yes, crazy. Uh, weak, steamy, Brooklyn, complications. All right, so we got the main words out of this one. Beach read. This is the longest one, but when we were in our bookstore vlog, the last one, I was reading this already, so I'm already like a little committed to this, but it is the longest book, and I said I wouldn't start with the longest book. <sighs> what should we do, what should we do? Should we try to steamroll through this first, and then seven days in June? I wish you guys could actually talk to me in these moments because I need some advice. You know what, I'm just gonna make an executive decision. We are gonna pick seven days in June. We're gonna start with this. <laughs> I really can do this this time, guys. I really can. Are you ready? We're starting at 118. Ready? I always get scared, okay. We are now starting. Let me get my books. I'm going in the living room. Come on. All right, I got all the goods. My iPad to play music, headphones for said music, book, obviously, and some wild. I really have a good feeling about this one. All right, seven days in June, let's do it. Wow, this book is very interesting so far. I didn't expect it to be what it currently is but i'm not mad at it it's very focused on like black representation and kind of explaining the plights that we deal with as a citizen in the u.s and just how to deal with trauma and the prologue kind of scared me because i was like uh oh, i hope it's not just a spicy nonsense book just to be spicy nonsense but as i continued to read it definitely started to develop more and I'm very intrigued. Currently I'm on page 46 and we are 
an hour and 16 minutes in, so not bad, not terribly great either. I didn't realize the font is so small in this book, so it's actually gonna take me a while probably to read this, but I'm not mad, it's very interesting. I'm definitely intrigued. I am feeling a little bit tired. I think it's because I'm listening to just lo-fi right now, and I'm kind of laying down on the couch, so I'm gonna get a coffee, and then I think we can continue going. Uno momento. All right, we got the goods. I think I'm gonna change what I'm listening to though, cause I don't wanna fall asleep. We're not doing that today. We're not. I'll see you in an hour probably. Okay, I wasn't gonna talk again for a while but this book is preaching. Okay, so it says they're talking on a panel right now. The main character, Eva, is talking on a panel with some other authors. So it says, we're expected to write about trauma, oppression, or slavery because those are easily, easily marketable black tropes. Publishers struggle to see us as having the same banal, funny, whimsical experiences that every human has because it did imply that we're human. Whoa. Okay, stop preaching cuz facts. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this book so far. I didn't realize like, I don't read too many books where the focus is on a black character. And obviously it's not intentional, but I didn't realize that it created a void in my reading experience. And now I really want to. I'm really enjoying this book. It's very, very cool to see other people discussing or feeling the same ways that I felt in my life that pretty much every black person in America has felt before. And it's in such a cool way because it's laced with the idea of love, but also like with our daily plights as well. Because like it's saying, we are normal people, but sometimes we're not always portrayed as that. Unfortunately, most times we're not portrayed as that. We're always the issue in society or we're only seen in one box. And to see us outside of that, written by people who look like me, is very, very cool. So I'm enjoying this book so far. Very good pick, guys. Also, I have to stand up. I think my legs are falling asleep. <sighs> my Apple Watch has been cursing me out this whole time too. It's like, um, babe, we need to stand. And I'm like, <laughs> not today. <laughs> It is getting so freaking cute. I didn't realize it, but I really enjoy that they're not perfect characters, that they're still trying to get their lives together, that they have flawed pasts. I really, really enjoy that. And when she said, when she whispered in his ear, stop writing about me, and he said, you first. <laughs> Had me kicking my feet up. Oh, it's so freaking cute, so cute. We're only 71 pages in, but I feel like I've been reading this story for a minute, but like in the best way. It's so good. Again, great pick, guys. <laughs> Let's get back to it. All right, I just got my lunch. I got Panera Bread again. We are currently three and a half hours in. I'm halfway through the book. I'm on 129 and it's gotten really, really good, but I'm really hungry. We got half a grilled cheese here. And I got two different soups so that when we get hungry later tonight, we'll have something. I know, I'm always thinking ahead. When books are this good, it makes me mad that like, it took me so long to read it, you know? I'm trying to also update the Goodreads every time I take a break. So I know my Goodreads is looking crazy for y'all that follow. If you haven't followed yet, go follow me. I update all the time. Also, you know what else I really like about the book before I get going? I love that they put really detailed things about the location, which is New York City, because after last summer when we were in New York City all summer, I like know where these places actually are. So it's setting the scene perfectly for me and it's just making it that much more all-encompassing, you know? All-encompassing, all all-encompassing. And it's just really cool to be that engaged in a book. Ugh, it's just the best feeling ever. Let me get back to it. We're doing so good. I 
finished Seven Days in June. This was a very different romance than I generally read, but it was refreshing. It was a good read. I think I would rate it, I don't know, I think I'm going to rate it at the end, but I did enjoy myself. What I like in particular is that they really brought up the idea to emphasize and to support the fact that there are invisible disabilities, you know? I thought that was really great representation and it was really nice to see someone talking about it because I think oftentimes people gloss over that fact and it was really cool to see that not only were these black main characters, but they also talked about really difficult topics that aren't generally publicized as much as other things. So I thought that that was very, very cool. I think this took me eight and a half hours to read, which is kind of long, but I also think that we're making good time. I paused it because I'm talking to you guys, um, but eight hours and 21 minutes. So not bad, not, not great, but I hope we can make up that time. The next options are Every Summer After, Beach Read, and Instructions to Dance. Oh, Instructions for Dancing, my bad. I think I'm gonna make the executive decision to start reading this one because I already started it and I was already intrigued. So I think we're gonna read this one next. Ooh, Sade, it's 11 o'clock. So this is when we start getting tired, but we will not quit today. We will keep going. You hear me? Keep me up. We got this. I know it. I know we can do this. Ready? Oh, let me start the timer again. All right, we are starting now. The Beach Read. Chapter one, the house. I'm gonna start over because I feel like it's cheating if I don't. I have a fatal flaw. I like to think we all do, or at least that makes it easier for me when I'm writing. Building my heroines and heroes up around this one self-sabotaging trait, hinging everything that happens to them on a specific characteristic. The thing they learn to do to protect themselves and can't let go of, even when it stops serving them. Mmm. Yeah, I feel that, yeah. Maybe, for example, you didn't have self-control. <laughs> That's not what it says. <laughs> Let me shut up so I can read, okay? I'm starting to lose it already. But no, we've got this, we got this. I'll see you in about, I'll see you in an hour. Ready, go. We're not having a repeat of last time, so I'm doing jumping jacks. <laughs> I'm out of shape though. It is currently 044, which means in European time, whoa, that looks scary. Which means in European time, it's 1, 12.45, it's 12.45. So you guys may not know this, but I really need my sleep schedule. And when I don't stay on my sleep schedule, I get sleepy drunk. Whoa, I usually cut this part out, but not today. Oh, <laughs> not today. All right, let's get back to the book. I'm gonna get some water. Also, we're gonna sit on the floor because I'm tired of the living room. I'm too comfortable. Remind me to look up what comfortable means in Japanese. We have officially relocated to me room. Watashi no heya. Yeah, you like that, I know. So we've officially relocated. I'm gonna start my timer now again. I'm never gonna finish this video. <sighs> All right, ready? Start. You know what this challenge reminds me of sometimes? 
you know how like they say you have a runner's high or you get a runner's high when you're running but you have to get to that point right and it feels really great but then there's some low lows it's like the part of the montage in a movie that they don't show the hard everyday parts not that just the fun parts you know that's what that feels like i'm i'm in the ebb part where is it the flow i don't know i'm in the bad part <laughs> I'm very tired. It is currently 10.50 in the morning. Um, I had to pause it because I forgot I have a video coming out today. Today is technically Sunday, but this will come out next Sunday. And I didn't do the thumbnail yet, so I had to pause it to work on that. But so far we are 17 hours and 51 minutes in. This is Beach Read, and I'm on page 287. I don't know how I feel about this one. I It's not a bad book, but I definitely don't feel as enthralled in the story as I did for the first book that we read. So that kind of sucks. And it's really hard. That's what she said. <laughs> I realized with this challenge, you have to have a solid book of interest in the part where I have to stay up at in the middle of the night. I can't even talk. I have to have a really good book for the part where I have to stay up in the middle of the night because that's the hardest portion of the video, right? That's the hardest portion of this challenge. And this just was not hitting for me the same. I don't know, like, I feel like they're trying to tie in so many different storylines in this story. It's not bad, again, like currently it's a three out of five star situation. But for whatever reason, I'm just not connected to these characters. like. I don't know. I just am not. I'm not. I I don't feel as connected to them as I feel like I usually am or should. So that's kind of a bummer. And this is my second Emily Henry book because before I read Book Lovers and I kind of felt the same thing, but I also read that during a 24-hour reading marathon. So I don't know if it's the challenge that's skewing my opinion or if I just don't really like how the stories play out in her writing. I don't know. So that's never fun. But I made an executive decision while I was reading this. I was like, Kalila. And she was like, yeah? And I was like, babe, we're struggling. And she was like, I know. <laughs> so then I was like, why don't we read the Nicola Yoon book next? Because I know you love her because I love her and we're the same person and we're kind of going crazy. So that's why we're talking to each other. And she was like, fair. So, the next book we'll read after this, instead of Every Summer After, I think it's going to be the Nicole Yoon book, which I think is great because it's the shortest book, and I think I can finish it in time. And I would feel really proud of myself if by the end of this, we can say that I finished three books. That's the goal. So, yeah. Again, it's 11 a.m. now. I'm going to make myself some coffee, take some vitamins. <laughs> eat an egg or something and just get back to it <sighs> the thing that never ends I realize I like these when I'm done with them but during this part I forgot how uh it feels you know I just feel uh feel tired we're gonna keep this party going all right I'll see you when I finish this book I guess Girl, I forgot to start the timer. <laughs> Hold on. We're back on. We finally finished Beach Read. We are at 20 hours. I don't know that was all right i felt like i just didn't like it as much as i thought it would it wasn't bad though but i'm hoping the next one will be better again we're doing this one it's the shortest one i think it's only like 280 pages which is fantastic i'm so tired <laughs> and just over it it is 1 30 and i'm ready to go to bed so let's power through this last little bit here and see if we can finish this book come on like 
30 minutes left and this was a good pick for the last book. She's very cute and I love how Nicole Yoon writes but I do have to say so far and I'm like in the halfway mark I'm at like 150 pages so far it's one of my least favorite Nicole Yoon books but I still enjoy it. I think I like this better than I did the last book that we read so still a great choice. Let's finish this strong people. We're so close. Let's keep going. We did it. Yay. Today was hard. Yeah, it was hard. But I only have like less than 100 pages left in this book. And we finished two relatively thickums books. So I can't be too upset. I think the art of these 24 hour reading marathons is to pick really good books. I don't think I picked bad books but I feel like I could have picked better books. I thought that Seven Days in June was like a four out of five star. I feel like they were trying to do a lot and I really was intrigued by the main characters. I like that they were flawed. I like that they talked about a lot of difficult topics like the race issue in America, also like invisible disabilities, things like that. I thought that was very cool. And it was just really nice to see their character development. So I thought that was a four out of five stars. For Beach Read, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the time that I read it or how lengthy I felt some things were. I felt like some things were really drawn out and overzealous with the details. But I thought that this was three out of five stars. I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. And I'm upset about that because when I was reading it initially, I thought it was really going to be good. It sounded very promising. But it wasn't bad. It was just average. Three out of five isn't bad. It was just average. And last but not least, I'm not done with this book, but I am like more than halfway done. And so far, I think that this is really cool. It's a very interesting take on romance for Nicole Yoon. And I don't think it's her best read, but I do think it's very interesting. And so far, even though I'm not done, I think I would rate it like a 3.5, which is the lowest rating I've given any of her books. The other two were five stars for me. So, interessante. But... <sighs> That's it for me, folks. It is, wow, it's almost six o'clock and I'm going to bed. Yeah, I'm going to bed super early. I got work tomorrow, but I love you guys. I had so much fun. If you liked this video as chaotic as it was, <laughs> please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Ah, I am tired. <laughs> And see. I am tired though. <laughs>